as humans, we make mistakes. Either we're trying to walk through glass doors, we're tripping down stairs, or we're getting hit with objects. But despite our clumsiness, many proteins in the body make sure we recover from our accidents so that we get to live another day and do it all over again. One of these proteins is called von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor is a very large multimeric glycoprotein found in your blood that is especially important in controlling blood loss after an injury. Specifically, von Willebrand factor allows for the adhesion of platelets to the site of damaged blood vessels. So you can kind of think of von Willebrand factor as a sort of glue in the blood that allows platelets to stick together and eventually form a clot. Its name is derived from this gentleman, Eric von Willebrand, a Finnish physician who in 1924 began to study an inherited bleeding disorder, which became known as von Willebrand's disease. Today's most common bleeding disorder, characterized by a deficiency in the amount or activity of von Willebrand factor. Here is a normal blood vessel. In the absence of injury, von Willebrand factor does not appear to interact with any of the circulating platelets. Von Willebrand factor is also stored in structures called Weibo Pilate bodies, which are storage organelles located in the endothelium that secrete von Willebrand factor during vascular injury. Once a blood vessel is damaged, one of the first things that happens is that the blood vessel constricts creating slower blood flow and thus a more suitable environment for coagulation factors in blood, such as these von Willebrand factors and platelets to stick together. Also, when these blood vessels are damaged, collagen, as indicated in the yellow bar, in the connective tissue, on the outside of the blood vessel endothelium, suddenly come in contact with the blood. As a result, von Willebrand factor binds tightly to collagen, causing platelets to bind and therefore become activated. Now, let's take a look at the general structure of a platelet. On the surface of the platelet exist glycoprotein 2A3B receptors, which are essentially receptors with significant affinity for von Willebrand factor. Once these platelets are bound to von Willebrand factor, they become activated, causing them to undergo a structural change to increase the surface area of the platelet. This then causes alpha granules containing even more von Willebrand factor to be, to be released along with something called fibrinogen, another glycoprotein that becomes a sticky fibrin mesh that traps red blood cells and eventually condenses to form a clot at the site of the injury. In addition, dense granules are also released which contain ADP and something called thromboxane, a hormone that activates other platelets to aggregate and signal even more platelets to bind, as shown in this photo here. In order to develop a better understanding of the function of von Willebrand factor and its role in coagulation, it is important to understand its structure. This protein consists of 2,050 amino acid residues and is incredibly rich in cysteine, which actually accounts for about 8% of the total protein's amino acids. The entire protein is also extensively glycosylated, with 12 N-linked and 10 O-linked oligosaccharides. This extensive glycosylation is important because the sugars assist in protein folding, which is especially important in a protein of this size, as well as encourages more protein-protein interactions. Because this protein is so large, it is divided into many different domains. A, B, C, D, and E. However, because many of the domain structures and functions are not yet known, we'll be focusing on a few important domains whose functions are known and play specific roles in blood clotting. These will be the three A subdomains, which all have the same alpha beta alpha sandwich like structure, the D3 domain, and the C terminal cysteine knot domain. The A1 domain contains the main binding site for the platelet glycoprotein 1B receptor. It consists of a central hydrophobic 5-stranded parallel beta sheet and a 6 anti-parallel hydrophobic strand which is enclosed by 7 amphipatic alpha helixes. In addition, the A1 domain is known to contain a large number of charged amino acids such as the 11 arginine residues shown here, which form 9 covalent interactions that help to stabilize domain. But what is interesting about the A1 domain is that it suggests that von Willebrand factor binds allosterically to platelets and that it has two conformations, one, that, one with strong affinity and one with weak affinity to platelets. In addition, it was discovered that the lysine at position 599, as shown, binds directly to the platelet receptor. In terms of the A2 domain, the important function of that is that it contains a cleavage site for ADAMTS13, a protease found in the plasma that prevents the platelets from clamping too much and regulates the activity of von Willebrand factor by slicing through it, as seen in this animation thus inactivating it by making it into smaller multimers. It is composed of a central beta sheet and six alpha helices, but what is different about the A2 domain from other A domains is that in place of the fourth alpha helix is a long loop that runs from the C terminus of the B4 strand to the N terminus of the B5 strand, as shown in green. The Adam TS13 cleavage site, which is composed of a thyrosine and a methionine shown here, is actually buried by this alpha 4 helix loop deep in its hydrophobic core. Now we move on to the A3 domain, 
The important function of this domain is that it plays a significant role in the binding interactions of collagen and von Willebrand factor. It consists of a central hydrophobic parallel beta sheet surrounded by seven amphipatic alpha helices. The specific collagen binding site contains a very high concentration of negatively charged amino acids, such as aspartate and glutamate, as highlighted in this photo, suggesting that adhesion to collagen is achieved through interactions between negatively charged residues on Van Willebrand factor and positively charged residues on collagen. A study published in the Journal of Biological Chemistry showed that mutations in which proline was converted to histidine, a positively charged amino acid, revealed decreased von Willebrand factor binding affinity to collagen, suggesting that von Willebrand factor and collagen interactions are reliant on charge. Now that we've covered the 3A subdomains, let's talk about the D3 domain, which binds to clotting factor 8, an important blood clotting protein involved in the coagulation cascade. Specifically, the binding site consists of 272 amino acid residues. In addition, as shown in this animation, factor 8 travels with von Willebrand factor because a specific interaction between the two is necessary for the survival of factor 8 in the blood. So, the last domain that will be mentioned is the C-terminal cysteine knot domain, or CTCK domain. A cysteine knot is a motif found in many proteins that contain three thisulfide bridges formed from pairs of cysteine residues. According to the structure of the von Willebrand CTCK domain, there are a total of four intrachain disulfide bonds between cysteine residues, or as represented by the bonds in yellow. Due to the strong covalent interactions from these disulfide bonds, the CTCK domain is essentially the protein superglue that holds the entire protein together. So, I hope you enjoyed this video about such an important protein in your blood. Next time you ever take a tumble, or accidentally cut yourself trying to make food, know that von Willebrand factor has got your back. Oh,